I ended the basically the neural network video series. I ended with these NLP examples, and I just wanted to unpack one of them so that you understand. Uh, in, for instance, PyTorch, if you do, uh, if you have a little embedding layer at the top, what does that actually mean? Okay. So in this example, we were doing named entity recognition, which is this goal of basically taking in, for instance, a window of three words and predicting the entity type for the middle word, okay, trying to predict whether it's a person or an organization or a location. And I mentioned that one approach to doing this is you basically have these one odd vectors, right, which um, would have a one in a specific position and a zero everywhere else. So you would have a little one odd vector corresponding to the word in. Let's just write that out here. Um, so you would have zero, zero, dunk, 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 and then a one in a particular position corresponding to the word in. Okay. And then you would have something similar for the word Paris and something similar for the word museums. And you would basically stick all these words together and that would serve as the input to your neural network. To unpack that a little bit, the diagram is most useful. So let's just look at that. What you would have is here at the bottom of your, of your neural network is you would have a one out embedding for the preceding word a one-out embedding for the center word and a one-out embedding for the word that follows. So these are all uh, one-out embeddings. And like, okay, let's just do that again. So for instance, for Paris, you would have zero, zero, dunk, 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 zero, and then one, and then zero, dunk, 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 zero, dunk, where this, the index where you have a one, that corresponds to the word Paris, okay? And, um, you would have a similar thing for the word in and a similar thing for the word museums if that was your specific window that you were looking at. Is everyone happy? Just not? And then what I said was, okay, well, cool. You take each of these one not um, embeddings. Let's just look at one of them. You multiply it with a matrix and then you end up with this vector here, which is a, a high dimensional continuous vector. So something like in like capital D dimensions. Okay. So these are continuous vectors, they're not one out, they've got values everywhere, okay? And then I went on, okay, I concatenate them, have a hidden layer here, have another layer here, and then take the softmax of that final layer, and then try to predict whether Paris is a or person, an organization, or a location, okay? Does that make sense? Nod, 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 cool. Now, you've learned about word embeddings, like in a whole different... Um, set of videos you've learned about word embeddings and then you learned about neural networks and also a different set of, of videos. And my question is instead of doing this one not thing here at the bottom why don't we just feed in the glove embedding for Paris here. We put the we go and look up the glove embedding for Paris we put that here. We um, take the word embedding for the word in we put that there we take the word uh, embedding for the word museums and we stick that there and we make a forward pass through the model. Why did we not do that? Okay, you can do that. That's perfectly reasonable. You can actually do that. And then you won't have this input that has these one odd things. You would just look up the embedding from glove, put that there and that would be a vector here, a vector here, a vector here, concatenate them and then go on with the rest of life. Okay, so maybe the better question is Instead of asking, can you do that? Or why would you not do that? Maybe the question is, what's different um, if we do that compared to using this approach with the one not embeddings at the bottom here? What's the difference? N that, that's absolutely correct. So what's actually happening inside the model here is this part is actually learning word embeddings. Okay? It's actually learning word embeddings. So to see that, I just want to unpack what it means when you're multiplying a one-off thing with a matrix. Okay. Can anyone actually tell me if I've got a matrix and I multiply that with a one-off thing? Remember each of these, for instance, um, you know, this one, this one here is, this is W01 multiplied with X0, right? That's, that's the value here. So here we've got a matrix and a one-off embedding here. What happens if you do that, if you multiply a matrix with a one-off embedding? Let's do this, okay? And this is called uh, an embedding layer, okay? So let's just very, very quickly um, run through these steps. So what you have is exactly like you say, we've got xt, this is our one-out vector. So this is a massive, big, 
50 dimensional, 50,000 dimensional vector, if that's the size of your vocabulary, vector with a zero, a zero, tunk, 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 zero, one, zero, tunk, 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 zero, and it's got a one in the position, let's say Paris. Its size is V, right? The size of your vocabulary. And every element in that vector is either a zero or a one. Okay, so that's how you can think of it. It's a V by one, a V by one matrix. Ah, oh, yeah, V by one matrix. Okay. Then you've got a WT here, which is a, a big matrix, one of these matrices that we're multiplying our one out vectors with. So this is an enormous matrix as well. Okay. It sits here. Um, okay. It has columns. Okay, so let's just draw in the columns here. It's got a first column, and it's got a second column, and then tunk, 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 up to the last column here. That's very ugly. To the last column here. It's still ugly, but I'll leave it. Okay, cool. So we've got these columns. Now, um, what's the dimensionality of this thing? Uh, Cassandra says D by V, is she right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, you need it for things to pan out, right? For things to pan out that and that needs to be the same and they are the same. D is the dimensionality of uh, the hidden space. And, and so she hacked it because she knew that the answer here should be D by one, okay? So it should be D by V, which means you've got uh, D here and then V columns in this direction. Okay, now tell me what happens when I multiply this continuous matrix with a vector looking like that. What is the effect of, of doing that? You're extracting one of the rows. You're like, the, the sentence is right apart for, from the word rows. Okay, so that's the end. Okay. Um, you're extracting one of the columns, okay? So let's just think about this. Okay, so this is grade one mathematics, right? How to multiply a matrix by a vector. You take that value there and you multiply that with that. That would be zero. That with that, that would be zero. That with that, zero. Tunk, 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 tunk. Up until that one point that you reach here. And that would correspond to the column in which this index is one. Are you with me? Okay, cool. So you write down whatever value that is, you write that down there, okay? Then you go the second row here, zero, zero, dunk, oh, sorry, this isn't zero. So it's that times zero, that times zero, dunk, 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 up until the, um, you get to the column that corresponds to that element being one. And you write that down in the second position in your output vector. And so in effect, what you're doing is you're slicing out this vector here, you're slicing that out and you're sticking that here, and that is the output of your multiplying the, um, the matrix here with that vector there. Okay, let's just continue this. So there's tunk, 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 and you're slicing out the blue column by multiplying it with that one odd vector. Does that make sense? Just nod. Okay, so actually, all you're doing is you're looking up and embedding. That is what happens if you multiply with a one-out vector. You're just doing a lookup. And so you're actually, in, in PyTorch or TensorFlow, you don't actually have to do explicitly do this multiplication, and it's probably quite inefficient to do it. And that's why PyTorch or TensorFlow would have a layer called an embedding layer. And what that embedding layer does is you feed in the index that you want, and what it pops out is the column of the embedding um, uh, the column in the embedding matrix corresponding to that particular embedding. Okay, does that make sense? Nod. Okay, and that's much more efficient than explicitly doing this uh, multiplication. So, actually what happens when you have a, a network like this, then you're entirely right. You could put glove embeddings here. Okay, but by doing one out vectors, one out vectors, one out vectors here, you're actually learning embeddings in these matrices. And you're doing that jointly by learning a ton of other stuff, including the classifier, which is the task that you're actually interested in. So you're learning these um, 
yeah, you're, you're learning all of these embedding matrices and you're learning the weights of my classifier in order to do the task that I want to do. And you're learning that jointly. Okay, does that make sense? And if you want to, for some reason, you can actually use these embeddings downstream for some other task. You can actually use them instead of glove embeddings. If that task is like a named entity recognition-like task, then that might actually be a good idea. Okay, does that make sense? Great stuff.